I'm Marcia Franklin. Welcome back to this Dialogue Web Extra. I'm here with Martha Raddatz. She's Chief White House Correspondent for ABC News. Wanted to talk to you about your recent trip to Iran, which we weren't able to talk about in the main program. Why'd you want to go? Of course, everyone wants to go. I've been. Yeah. It's, it's just fascinating, partly because it's so hard to get in. It's so hard to get in, and you know how that is. Anytime they won't let you in someplace, <laughs> you really want to go. It's, uh, I mean, the visa process is, is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, and then they tell you at the last minute, okay, you have a visa and you have 10 days to use it, so you, you basically drop everything and go over. Um, it, it worked out for, for us because I happened to be over there for the first presidential debate, so we took, we were live from Tehran during the presidential debate and I'd spent a couple of days talking to people. Of course I had a headscarf on and you know which as you know is required. You can't get off the airplane without it. Um, but I wanted to go because I think that's a huge challenge for the next president. And to talk to people and it's such a dual society. I'm sure you saw this too. I, my favorite moment was we were in this huge rally, you know, the Quds rally, thousands and thousands of people out on the street saying death to America, death to Israel. And this man comes up to me and he says, where are you from? And I said, I'm from America. And he said, well, welcome. Yeah. And, and that's what that society is like. I might, one of my editors at ABC, I was telling him that story. He said he wrote several years ago a story, you know, death to America, can you come to dinner? Um, but, it, but it is this society that is very different from the way it looks in most places. It is also a society that's terrifying. And I, it's my first trip there, which is amazing, but my translator and the cameraman both said they thought it was much, much more difficult to get around. I mean, we ended up being detained for a couple of days, our passports taken away because we'd shot something on the street, a, a police officer. Um, but it is, there were so many people who'd come out and tell us how difficult it was. And that, you know, the, the, the issue of the headscarf and, the, you know, the young people who don't really want to wear one, who are kind of pushing the limits and can get rounded up in buses and, and taken away. Um, all, all of that and the fear there, I thought, was, was really quite intense. I certainly noticed a difference from my trip in 2003, which was right after our invasion of Iraq, when actually some Iranians said to me, oh, gee, we wish you had done that for us, yeah. you know. And, uh, and then in 2005, by the time I went back again, there was a lot of, uh, a lot more fear internally and and dislike of America, as well. So you're right. It it just it's, I, I think of it as almost a country with a, a constant migraine. You know, it's just you know where you have you feel it coming on, and it's and it's, it's hard to find the truth. It is very hard to find it's, the truth. It's hard. There. I mean, I even as I say, well, you know, they they think this, they think that. I mean, it, the number of people you you were there six weeks. I mean, the number of people we were able to talk to who would actually talk to us, which is always difficult on TV, and obviously I do it when I'm not on camera as well as talk to people. But but it, it's a confusing place. I can see why foreign policy. It's so difficult there because it's confusing. You don't know the truth. And not that we ever know the absolute truth about anything, but it's especially difficult well, to find Well, scholars that, have studied Persia for hundreds and hundreds of years and haven't figured out the riddle yet. Um, so, but it, it, Barack Obama in particular has gotten a lot of criticism for wanting to sit down with ah Ahmadinejad. Right you know, off the bat. Right off the bat. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I would, I guess, it, and, and you know, it's a whole lot different campaigning than it is when you actually take office for anyone. And I think that the next president has to sit down and figure all this out. I mean, my question would be, if you go to Ahmadinejad and you don't get what you want, you don't get anywhere, well, then what, you do, what do you do? Have you escalated? Or, and, and in fact, people on the street to me would say, what they worry about with that is, does that elevate him? Mm -hmm. Is he now talking to another pre the, a president of the United States? Does that elevate him and, and make him more? What do your internal... Uh, sources tell you at places like the Pentagon. I mean, there, you know, there's been articles uh, alleging that uh, the Bush administration wanted to strike Iran. Other people say no. Uh, what do you hear from the military brass inside? Uh, the military is always the last that wants to go to course. war. And I think they think about it a great deal. I think there were certain members of the administration who are far more uh, wanting to go after them. I think for instance, uh, let's go to Syria mm -hmm. and the bombing, the Israeli mm -hmm. bombing. Mm -hmm. um, I think there were some in the administration who said, you know, if they don't do it, we should, and others who didn't. I, I think actually in these last few months that there was no intention of going after Iran. First of all, 
I'm not really sure it would work. I mean, it might disrupt any plans of nuclear programs. They're difficult to find. Um, I, I think a, a far more interesting question that I don't think we know the answer to is what the U.S. has actually said to Israel about that. I mean, you can either say, don't, don't do that, you'll, you'll really create a hornet's nest here, you'll, you'll make people in the region hate us even more. That, to me, is the biggest question, yeah. because far more likely that Israel would do something, I think, far than more our likely. country. And I think and Israel has a red line on when they would do that, and how far the Iranians could take this nuclear program before they'd actually do something. And, and I, the, the question I do not have answered is, is what the administration has actually been saying for these, these months to Israel. One would think, given that nothing happened, that they're saying you've got to back off. Plus, the U.S. has reached out in a diplomatic way that they have not throughout the Bush administration. I mean, there was actually face-to-face -face contact. So that was new. So that tells you that they're, they're trying other things. Well, there's lots of things missiles. going on in Switzerland, you know, behind the scenes yes. that we don't hear about. And how much of a threat do you think Iran is? What's your sense? Well, I think when you look at the leadership there, and you look at them acquiring nuclear weapons, mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a it, it, if in fact they are trying to get nuclear weapons, as people certainly seem to think they are, I think it's a huge threat. I really do. And I think it'll be one of the greatest challenges for the next president about what you do. I mean, the fact is George Bush leaves office with them closer, according to intelligence, to, to getting a nuclear we weapon than when he came in. I would not disagree with you on any of that. And in, in uh, corresponding with some of my Iranian friends, I know how dire they feel the situation is as well. So I look forward to hearing more of your reports from, from that country. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marsha. You've been listening to Martha Raddatz, ABC News White House correspondent on this Dialogue Web Extra. Thank you.